activism begins with ACT. The Rush Belleville Show features the stories of hardworking grassroots activists working for an end to prohibition in today's activist agenda. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's 3.30 p.m. here on the Pacific Coast, and that means it's 11.30 p.m. all the way out in Ireland, where we're going to go for our next interviews. It's kind of a double interview here. I spoke earlier today with... Uh, Kevin Higgins from Normal Ireland because he needed to pre-record, couldn't stay up till 11.30. And then we're going to speak live with Luke Ming Flanagan from Normal Ireland uh, right after we talk to Kevin. So we'll go to the Kevin interview first, and then we'll be on the line with Luke. Welcome back, everybody. Half past the hour time for our activist agenda. And joining us today, we've got two gentlemen from Ireland that are a part of normal Ireland. I'm going to talk first here to Kevin Higgins. Uh, Kevin, welcome to the show, by the way. Hello, Earl. Thanks for having me on. Oh, so glad to have you on. And uh, you guys, you and a bunch of other folks, got together and had the idea of forming, as far as I'm aware, Ireland's first normal chapter. H how did that come about? Well, it all started off about two years ago. Um, I organized a legalized cannabis protest in the middle of Dublin. And the idea, it was part of the Global Marijuana March on the uh, 5th of May, I believe. Mm -hmm. And after that particular protest, uh, we realized that doing an annual event won't really cut it. Um, we need effective lobbying. We need to bring the cannabis community together in Ireland, which is something that's never happened. So I decided to talk to Ming, who spoke at the protest. He invited me into his office. And since then, I've been setting up Normal Ireland, and we're delighted to be a chapter of Normal, which was founded, of course, in America. And we're grateful for them to have us. Excellent. And so if people want to get more information on Normal in Ireland, what is your website and Facebook and all that? Well, our Facebook is facebook.com slash normal ireland all one word and our website is going live on the 24th of october and that is www.normal.ie normal.ie all right we'll look forward to that toward yeah. the end of october here and how has the reception been amongst the irish people do you think uh, folks are ready for the legalization message yeah, and I have to thank America for that one. Um, it's really given us hope over here in Ireland. And one example would be um, there's a show called Prime Time on RTE, which is our state broadcaster. And it really would be the Jay Leno of shows. It is probably the most popular show in Ireland. And they contacted us last week to ask to do a live TV debate on cannabis legalization the night before the bill on the 5th of November. Wow. Well, that's a great exposure, especially for a group that's just so new. You must be pretty excited. Yeah, we're we're very happy, and we're lucky that we um, we got a former Chief Constable, Tom Lloyd, who's coming over from the UK, and he's going to be sitting on the panel and explaining um, how he's gone through law enforcement and how he's realized the prohibition just doesn't work. Mm, that's fantastic news. And uh, so Normal Ireland is just getting geared up and... Uh, how many people do you have involved so far, and, and uh, are you looking for more? What, what sort of events do you have in mind? Well, what we, want, we want to do a wide range of events. Um, for instance, we're having um, author Doug Fine over on the 14th of November in Galway. And um, we also want to do more protests, and we want to have our first public meeting, which we're long awaiting. We were hoping to have it before the actual protest itself, but it's getting so busy now we're going to have to postpone it till after. But we've assembled quite a fantastic board. Uh, we've two addiction specialists on our board, one politician, a journalist from Ireland's leading uh, music magazine, Hot Press, and uh, they're supporting our protest as well and giving us a lot of exposure. So it really is kicking off pretty well. All right. Well, I'm excited to hear about that, that the uh, normal message is spreading all across Europe and the U.K., and I'm interested in the political side of things. You know, of course, with uh, uh, the U.K. And, okay. and Europe, they've got a whole different set of laws going on there, and so we're going to turn now to, uh, I'll get the full name here, T.D. Luke Ming Flanagan, and we'll just refer to you as Ming from here on. Uh, Ming, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you. 
Yeah, uh, really excited about this. And, you know, of course, here in the States, we look at how we have to uh, fight marijuana prohibition kind of one state at a time because at the federal level, it's difficult to get any traction on the issue. <laughs> Can you give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of the, the politics in Ireland and how the fight to legalize has to go there? I mean, parliamentary wise and what sort of structures are you going to have to deal with? Well, um, uh, I'd have to say you're uh, a, a long way ahead of the game in the United States of America on the whole issue at the moment. Actually, I'm getting a lot of feedback on my phone here, so I think maybe you, you better you better ring me again because I can just hear my voice back. Oh, yeah, getting kind of an echo. Sometimes the Skype will yes. do that just a little bit. Let me see if I kill my microphone after the question, and maybe that will help. Go ahead, Ming. See if that see if that works. If I kill the mic there, yeah, and um, uh, that's a lot better. And um, uh, we, as I was saying, you, you're quite a bit more advanced over in the United States on on uh, the whole uh, campaign. Uh, uh, and as uh, Kevin has already said, we're very heartened to see what's happened in uh, in the United States with the two year states legalizing it, uh, Colorado and Washington. Uh, Outright, uh, we are at the moment uh, getting ready for a legalization of cannabis bill, which goes before uh, our parliament or the doll, as we call it, on November uh, 5th and uh, 6th. And uh, we get the opportunity to uh, uh, debate it for an hour and a half uh, uh, on the first evening and an hour and a half on the second evening, uh, upon which uh, uh, all of the members of parliament or uh, the members of the Dáil, or TDs as we call them, uh, will get uh, an opportunity to vote as to whether it will be made uh, legal or not. And uh, we have uh, uh, built our bill um, uh, uh, pretty much uh, around uh, what they've done in Colorado. We liked uh, what uh, we've seen, uh, what they've actually done there. And uh, it, that's, it, that, that's the road that we've gone down. Now, from the point of view of uh, will it be passed and how many people will vote for it? Well, there are 166 uh, people in, in our parliament and um, uh, you would need uh, ha- more than half of that to get it passed. And uh, I suppose uh, to date, uh, I suppose we would have about a handful of people uh, that will vote for it. Who knows how many will vote for it on the day, but uh, that's, that's where we are. But uh, from the point of view of public opinion, uh, there have been opinion polls uh, done uh, recently, uh, one on the journal uh, newspaper, uh, it's the biggest uh, online publication in Ireland, and uh, 33 or 34,000 people took part in the poll, and uh, over 70% uh, were in favour of legalisation. So while uh, the members of Parliament uh, might not be in tune uh, with the, what the public are saying, uh, fortunately there are a handful of us that are. That's really good news. And I'm just wondering, uh, so, and forgive my ignorance on this, but the Irish people and, and your parliament have a degree of independence on this issue where it doesn't matter what the UK or the European Union thinks on the issue? Well, uh, I suppose uh, every country could say that uh, they have uh, the United Nations looking uh, over their shoulder. Uh, uh, but um, uh, uh, other than that, uh, there, 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 there wouldn't be a problem with this uh, if Ireland, as an independent state, we still are independent. I know they do try and give it away to the European Union, try their damnedest for some reason. Uh, but uh, we are independent, and if uh, we decided to do it, uh, we'd be perfectly within our rights to do it, no more than Uruguay did. And this is why it's such excellent news what's happened in Colorado and Washington in that uh, up until now in a lot of cases uh, countries uh, would be wary of maybe sanctions being taken against them or pressure being put on them uh, because they would seem to be uh, easy on drugs or lax on drugs in some sort of a way. But uh, now that it's happened within the borders of the United States of America um, uh, it kind of makes it a bit more difficult uh, for the United States to uh, take out the big stick and go, hey, you can't be doing that, when in fact <laughs> it's happening uh, in, in your wonderful country uh, itself. So uh, in, in that way, it makes it makes the whole fight easier, you know? Exactly. And that was something I tried to explain to people in Washington and Colorado as the vote was approaching, is that this was a uh, the first shot 
in world ending worldwide prohibition and how important it would be seen to people in other countries. And uh, Ming, I want to ask you with regard to fighting for the end of prohibition on a public relations level in the United States, it seems to have taken three major prongs of this uh, argument. One is the medical marijuana argument. Two is the argument of raising tax money. And three is the argument that marijuana is safer than alcohol. How well would any of those or all of those play in Ireland, especially the last one? Well, uh, the marijuana is safer than alcohol argument isn't uh, actually an argument that really I have uh, used that much uh, actually until I read the Mason uh, Tiber book and uh, I think it, it is a, a very interesting angle. It's not that I haven't thought about it but you have to think about it here in Ireland. Uh, when you come out and uh, you use as your best foot forward that it isn't as harmful as alcohol you are open to uh, the, the retort that well that doesn't bloody well say much you know <laughs> So um, uh, while I will use it as an argument and it is a very important argument uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be one of the main ones, but that uh, 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 the the argument that Mason Tiber puts uh, puts across uh, is is actually an eye opener for, uh, to me uh, for someone who's been involved in this game for about sixteen years. That uh, it actually gives people at the age of eighteen the choice to choose a less harmful drug, and uh, I, I I think it's a very good argument to put across. And I will be putting it across uh, uh, during the the whole debate in the in, in in the coming weeks. But what I I suppose one of the main arguments for me uh, would be that it, it would make it uh, people would know what they were smoking and what they were using, because uh, in Ireland uh, over the last couple of years uh, we have uh, seen a situation where uh, weed or grass or call it whatever you want has been uh, sprayed with adulterants to uh, triple its weight uh, and uh, it, the stuff that they put in it, everything from uh, uh, paint that you use for roadside markings um, uh, to uh, hairspray, etc., has been put in it. And people do not know what they are, they are smoking. Legalization, uh, for me, uh, that would be one of the biggest positives uh, if we were to get rid of that problem. Like, for example, uh, I remember about a year and a half ago, uh, people were smoking weed that uh, when you got the ash uh, that came out of it after you burnt it, when you rubbed it between your fingers, it turned into a black, viscous, oily substance. Now, um, uh, that is uh, an absolutely terrible situation whereby you have young people and people of all ages out there smoking that sort of crap. And uh, if you legalized it, obviously that would change. And for me, that would be one of the big ones. And the cost to the health service down the line uh, from people smoking uh, adulterated uh, cannabis. And if it was legalized, uh, obviously you wouldn't have that problem because uh, uh, people uh, will buy it off a vendor that they can trust. And obviously they'll trust a legal one more so than an illegal one. Very good point. And you mentioned briefly the health service, something we don't have here in the United States. And I'm wondering uh, how well are the people in Ireland acquainted with the medical cannabis arguments, the medical uses of marijuana, and maybe the argument that it would save money for the National Health Service? Well, um, uh, you, you say you have a med- you don't have a health service, and we do. Well, they're 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 trying their best to get rid of it, <laughs> uh, but uh, we are right. We still do have one, and uh, uh, from the point of view of uh, medical uh, marijuana, we are looking at a situation where our parliament is about to uh, uh, legalise a, 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 a spray. Uh, is Satibex, uh, which is a, a tincture of cannabis, which people would spray under their tongue uh, and use it uh, uh, to relieve uh, a pain and uh, some of the uh, the side effects of uh, of having multiple sclerosis. But they, uh, there, there is a bit of discontent uh, among the uh, legalisation of cannabis community about the fact that it is only currently going to be made available in that form, and that there is. Uh, a monopoly there on the distribution of it, which will, needless to say, put up the price uh, for people who, who, who try to access it. But uh, medical, the whole medical marijuana argument is uh, a, a, a sort of galloping, in, in, in a sense, relative to, uh, to to what it used to be. Because let's say ten years ago, I would have mentioned it to the Multiple Sclerosis Association 
meeting here in Ireland and uh, you would think that you had 10 heads, uh, the reaction that you'd get off them. So we have moved forward in that sense, but uh, not quickly enough. And I have... I, I personally, in, in, in my fight to legalize cannabis for recreational use, I've been very careful not to uh, abuse that situation and to uh, talk uh, about uh, the legalization of cannabis for medical reasons uh, as much as I would for recreational reasons. Because I, 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 I think there are two separate issues in a sense and uh, to be seen trying to piggyback one off the other is a little bit disingenuous, but I think they should be legalised for both reasons. But uh, at the same time, I think it's important to talk about the two of them in a, in a separate context. Mm. Uh, we're speaking with <clears throat> Luke Flanagan, also known as Ming, from Normal Ireland. And was the TD at the beginning the, the title? Are you a member of the Irish Parliament? I am, yeah. I'm uh, Chakti Dolly. It's, it's Irish uh, for... A, a member of the Dáil uh, or our Parliament, as it is, there are uh, there are uh, it, it's the uh, lower house, it's the uh, the house uh, elected by general suffrage across the the whole of the Republic mm-hmm. of Ireland, and uh, you have an upper house, uh, a Senate as well, with uh, uh, sixty members in it. So there's, we we're uh, we are we, we are the primary uh, legislators, uh, and ultimately we decide if you have a majority. But um, uh, at the moment, I'm an independent, uh, as are about, uh, I'd say, about 20, maybe 21 other uh, members of parliament at this stage. So that's, uh, that's, that, that's where I am politically anyway. I used to be mayor of my area, and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been a, a, slow, a slowly developing uh, process over the last 15 or 16 years. Well, Ming, you just may be the only person I know in a drug reform nonprofit that is also a sitting member of a national legislative body. This would be like a U.S. congressman who is heading a normal chapter in a state. This is amazing. Yeah, well, it, it, it definitely helps, and uh, it, 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 it really... Uh, the, the, the interesting thing about it is uh, that uh, I have been elected uh, from an area that would be considered uh, socially conservative, uh, um, uh, and I suppose you'd kind of have to agree that it is socially conservative when you, when you hear that we voted against legalising divorce, where I come <laughs> from, uh, uh, less than uh, 20 years ago. So, or 15 years ago. So, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's definitely uh, a new issue for the Irish public uh, politically, and uh, it's very exciting to be able to uh, lead it. And I understand uh, no European Parliament uh, has voted on legalising it uh, outright uh, throughout uh, the, the the whole of the country. So uh, that will be a first as well. And uh, it will be uh, in that little uh, uh, competitive spirit that we have with uh, Great Britain at this stage. It'll be nice to get it into our Parliament before they got it into got it into ours. I know that's that's pretty amazing. Not only that uh, your constituents would elect you with such a, a strong stand for marijuana legalization, but also that they could appreciate your love of the movie Flash Gordon. Yes, yeah, well, look at, uh, I, I took the view when uh, I entered politics that uh, if uh, I was going to say something, uh, well, then uh, you need to get people listening uh, and uh, show them something interesting. And no more than uh, you put a, a worm on a hook when you go fishing, um, uh, the worm on my uh, political hook was uh, using the name Ming and uh, the media have uh, come biting. Uh, they, I suppose the great skill I've got to try and develop now is to uh, beat some of that media off with a baseball bat uh, because it can be quite annoying at times. <laughs> so um, uh, that's, uh, that, that's it. But you, as they say uh, with publicity, you can turn on the tap, but uh, you, uh, you can turn off the tap. But uh, I, I uh, tend to uh, try to focus on social media through my uh, Facebook uh, page and through my uh, Twitter account and it's, uh, I think it's going to be a very uh, interesting era uh, for issues such as uh, the legalization of marijuana now that uh, the public can get their information out there unfiltered uh, by uh, the uh, so-called media. And uh, I, I think it's a great day. Now we have become the media. We, we are the ones who put the message out. Yeah, that's great news. And folks, if you want to follow uh, Luke Ming Flanagan, a uh, member of the Irish Parliament and working with uh, Normal Ireland, you can follow him at Luke Ming. Is that correct? Yeah, at Luke Ming and uh, Facebook, uh, it's uh, uh, Luke Ming Flanagan TD. So 
you'll be able to follow me on uh, various different issues there if you'd like to. That's excellent. And uh, at Normal Ireland on Twitter, Normal Ireland on Facebook, and Normal.ie on the web after the 24th. Luke Flanagan, thank you so much for joining us here on the Russ Belville Show, and good luck with everything you're doing in Ireland. Not at all. Thanks for the opportunity for us to uh, uh, publicize this issue uh, and uh, any support we can get from the United States. We appreciate it and uh, we're delighted with the progress you're making because uh, like it or not, and a lot of the time I might dislike it, ye are listened to and that's good for us. So, all right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Good luck in Ireland and good luck uh, with your political career. Appreciate you. When we come back, time for a radical rant on the University of Alabama busts. It's simply business. It's simply business. It's simply business. You know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. It's simply business. 